Hey, what's up, Peanut? In the previous video, we showed you how to install OpenJDK 11. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background information about why we actually made that choice. And if you haven't seen those videos yet, I have a link above and there's gonna be a link in the description below. Well, my friends, let's dive into the question that actually motivated me to make this video, which is I thought it'd be valuable to give a little insight into why we chose Adopt OpenJDK 11 over one of the other versions. And for people who aren't familiar with Adopt OpenJDK or the JDK at all, what it is is a tool that we use to develop and run code that is built on top of the JVM. So that includes languages like Java and the one we care about for the series that this video is actually part of, Clojure. So the way it works is like this. There are two products that are produced by Oracle, the JDK and the Open JDK. And as of right now, the JDK and the Open JDK are actually the exact same from a technical perspective. That means from feature set and performance, they are the same. So you don't have to worry about there being a difference there. And I want to take note of the fact that I'm saying Oracle JDK and Oracle Open JDK because that distinction is going to become important a little bit later in the video. So if there are no differences between the JDK and the Open JDK, why would you choose one over the other? Well, the big difference comes with the licensing. And the way that it works is that Open JDK is free to use in development and production, whereas the JDK is free to use only in development. And when you put it into production, you're going to have to pay a subscription fee to Oracle. And what do you get in return for this subscription fee? Why would you want to pay at all if it's free in dev and production if you just use Open JDK? The reason why is because you get Oracle support. And this includes security, bug fixes, patches, and in general, just Oracle backing you. The next piece of information I want to give you is what the release cadence used to look like for Oracle JDK and Oracle Open JDK. And what used to happen is every three or so years, it usually ended up bleeding into the or so category, Oracle would release a new version of the JDK. As you can imagine, this kind of slow release cadence created some problems. And as a result, Oracle in 2017 announced that they would be moving to a different model for their release cadence, licensing, and support. And this information, the change to the release cadence, licensing, and support model is what I want to focus on in this video. And that's actually where we are right now. So what Oracle is going to do is instead of releasing every three plus years, they're gonna release new versions every six months. And the goal is to increase the speed of delivery and technical innovation. And all of this begins with Java 11. So on September 25th, 2018, Oracle released OpenJDK 11. Based on the new release cadence, this means that Oracle OpenJDK 12 would be released six months after that. And then six months after 12, 13 is released and so on and so forth. Now, what else changed in addition to just there being a faster release cadence? Oracle is proposing a new model for support. The way that it now works from a support model perspective is only the most current version of the OpenJDK will be supported by Oracle. And what we mean by supported is that they'll receive security and bug patches. So what does that actually look like? Well, as we recall, OpenJDK 11 is released, and then six months after that, 12 comes out. What that means is that when OpenJDK 12 comes out, OpenJDK 11 stops receiving Oracle support. And then OpenJDK 13 will come out, and OpenJDK 12 will stop receiving the support. Having said all this, there are special versions of the OpenJDK called LTS or long-term support versions. And these are 11, 17, 23, and so on. And what Oracle has proposed is that if you don't want to upgrade every six months, but you don't want to lose Oracle support, you'll have to pay to stay on one of the LTS versions. So for example, you would have to pay to stay on 11 until 17 came out, and then you could upgrade to 17 and just pay for that version there. So I know I just threw a lot of things at you, so let's rephrase this in a more digestible way. If you wanna keep on using Oracle OpenJDK for free, you have to upgrade every six months to the latest version. If you don't upgrade every six months, you lose Oracle support. And this can be bad in production environments where security is everything. However, if for some reason you don't wanna upgrade every six months, that's not a problem. You can stay on one of the LTS versions and pay for Oracle support, and they will continue to support you. As you can imagine, there are pros and cons to always having to jump to the latest version of the Open JDK. So what I'll do is provide a little bit of an idea of why one company would make that choice while another company wouldn't wanna make that choice. 
So it starts with, is there anything wrong with actually upgrading every six months? And the answer is no. These are Oracle developed products. They are rock solid. If you are in a modern development workshop and you're following best practices, this is probably not too taxing on your organization. And you might even be more inclined to do it because it makes migrating easier. However, if you're in a large commercial organization, upgrading might not be the easiest task for you. You have legacy products and there is a lot of code to look after, which means there is a development cost, a QE cost. There is the cost of not having Oracle supporting your product. As a result, if you are a large organization like that and that's your scenario, then it might actually be cheaper for you to just pay Oracle to support the LTS version rather than jumping every six months. But again, this is all specific to your organizations and you really have to do your own risk benefit analysis of this to figure out what works best for you. Now, you may have remembered that I told you to take note of the fact that we're using Oracle's OpenJDK. And the reason for this is because Oracle is not the only company that's actually producing builds of OpenJDK. For example, Adopt OpenJDK, Red Hat, IBM, Microsoft, Amazon, the list really does go on. And the best part is some of these companies like Adopt OpenJDK are actually providing support for the LTS versions. So whereas Oracle is going to stop supporting OpenJDK 11, something like Adopt OpenJDK would actually continue supporting their build of OpenJDK 11. And that's why I chose Adopt OpenJDK 11, because it doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist or if you're a large organization, you can safely use it in dev and production. And because it's Adopt OpenJDK and they're going to provide us with LTS support, we can safely use it without having to worry about security issues or bugs that may pop up. So that's everything for this video. Thank you for watching. If you found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel.